Hi, and welcome everybody to another edition of the Winner's Circle Sports Betting Podcast. It's Friday, August the 12th, and I'm joined today, like I will be every Friday going forward during football season, by Mr. Jesse Shul of jessieshul.com, the guy they call the Iceman. Jesse, how are you, my friend? Doing pretty good, Ross. I'm happy to be back home and happy to be here with you today. Yeah, uh, those of you who are viewing, I just want to let you know, Jesse's in Thailand. That's where he spends his, uh, I mean, he was back in Western Canada for a while, but uh, he makes his home in Thailand. Now that the whole thing with uh, COVID-19 has passed us by to some degree, um, he's back in his, where he wants to be. And uh, he's taping at 3 a.m. in the morning Thailand time. So talk about dedication, folks. Anyway, Jesse, any observations you've seen over the course of the past week you like to talk about in the world of sports betting? Or or maybe you want to tell the folks where you prefer they find your picks and how you've been doing of late. Well, I've been doing pretty good of, of late. and uh, I'm not too fussy about where the people buy my picks as long as they're buying the picks. And uh, if they go to Sports Memo, I'll let them know that Currently, I am number one in profit for the year of 2022 at Sports Memo, so that's not bad. Um, but, of course, I get the best bang for my buck if you go straight to the source, get it at jessieshul.com. Um, I got a couple preseason games tonight that I'm excited about. I got a free play on the New York Jets that I'm excited about. And yeah, just looking forward to football season, Ross. Yeah, and people should look forward to getting your picks because uh, look at Covers.com no longer sells picks on their site. There was a period of about 20 to 30 years now uh, leading up to this occurrence happening where every handicapper wanted to be on covers because, number one, it's the most highly trafficked site in the sports betting industry or has been over the last 30 years on average. And, and number two, obviously, the more people that go there, the more people that buy, the more revenue is established in the creme de la creme uh, get on that site. And Jesse was one of the guys that covers when they expired operations in that regard. So that tells you about the caliber of handicapper Jesse Shule is. And I, for one, am a big fan and I'm about the biggest snob you could find in this industry. I'm very picky who I like to work with and who I admire, and Jesse certainly falls under that category. I can tell you, folks, uh, yesterday I released two videos, free picks, on this channel, Baltimore. My buddy Jesse, who told me last week, I think we missed the boat. We didn't miss the boat, Jesse. They covered again. I, I was on now. that boat with you last night. All right, beautiful. 21-0 and 0 straight up, and... 19 one and one against the spread out of Baltimore Ravens since 2016 with John Harbaugh. And like I kiddingly said yesterday, and I'll say it again, if John Harbaugh is playing fish with his five-year-old granddaughter, he wants to win. And he certainly does in preseason as well. Also had the New York Giants plus two. Uh, they actually went to plus three, which would have covered. But in all fairness, we grade the picks on uh, the line we give out at the time of the video. Sometimes it works for us. Sometimes it works against us. Uh, it worked against me yesterday, but still got a push. So one zero and one, and a couple free picks on Saturday games for you from myself and Doug Upstone. Check it out on the archives of our YouTube channel. And if you haven't subscribed, folks, please take a second to do so. It costs you absolutely nothing. No strings attached. And uh, hit that notification bell after you subscribe, and uh, you will be alerted immediately upon any of our winning uh, free pick videos going up on this channel. Uh, we're going to cover two teams in the AL East today and give you our predictions on their uh, regular season win total. One is the New England Patriots, which will be covered by Jess or um, by Ross, myself, and the other one would be the Buffalo Bills, who's covered by Jesse. You notice I gave you the Buffalo Bills and not myself, right? So anyway, uh, Jesse, take it away. Let us know what you think of the Bills, their regular season win total, and their chances of going over or under. Well, Ross, first, let me thank you for uh, giving me the Bills today because I'm a positive person. I like to say positive things. 
And after the first week having to cover Seattle, the second week having to cover Chicago, I thought for sure you would give me Atlanta this week. So I'm, <laughs> I'm really happy to be talking about the Bills. And I, I like the Bills. I know you like the Bills. You told me last year the Bills were going to win the Super Bowl. And they probably should have beaten those Kansas City Chiefs. We all remember Josh Allen, game-winning drive, touchdown with 49 seconds left. And, uh, you know, 99 times out of 100, you win that game. But that last game there uh, in Kansas City was just that one game that, unfortunately, it didn't work out. Um, so the Bills have a, a score to settle. Josh Allen has a score to settle. Allen was extremely impressive last year. He was extremely impressive in that game. He went toe-to-toe, head-to-head against Patrick Mahomes, and he was by far the better quarterback in that game. Um, I expect big things from Josh Allen this year. Of course, uh, last year, the Rams picked up Vaughn Miller, and they said, we're all in for the Super Bowl because we got Vaughn Miller. Well, guess what? The Bills got Vaughn Miller this year. Uh, he's going to improve a defense that ranked first in scoring, allowing 17 points per game last year, first in passing, allowing only 163 yards per game. And where was that defense against Kansas City on that on that last drive. Um, you know, if there's one critique of the Bills, it's uh, they don't quite have the star-studded backfield with the really superstar running back. Uh, they get a rookie out of Georgia, James Cook, and we're going to hope that he follows in the footsteps of some of the other Georgia running backs, guys that you might have heard of, Todd Gurley, Nick Chubb, even Sonny Michelle, who's maybe not quite the superstar as Gurley and Chubb, I mean, he came in and made an immediate impact in his first year in the league. Perhaps James Cook can do that. Um, at the end of the day, there's the Bills are expected to win 11 and a half games. The price is juiced to the over. Um, everybody's on the Bills. You know, everybody likes, I like the Bills. I know Ross likes the Bills. But, I, I mean, they don't have an easy schedule. But I look at their schedule, and I, I can only find four games that they might not be a favorite. I believe they will be favored in 13 of their 17 games. The four games where that might not be the case, we, we start with week one against the Rams. Um, it's roughly a pick em. I, I still like the Bills in that game if, you, if you're making me choose a side. Uh, week six at Kansas City, a revenge game. I mean, you got to love the Bills in that game. They might not be, they might not be a favorite. They're not going to be too much of a dog, but it's, it's a very winnable game. Week 13 at New England. Um, they might well be a favorite in this game as well, but New England's not an easy place to, to play. A road game against a Belichick team looks like a spot where you maybe you'd say that they could be a dog or a pick em. And then week 17 at the Bengals, who knows what's going, what Cincinnati is going to be doing by that time. They could well be a favorite in that game. But if Cincinnati plays the way they did last year, um, maybe, maybe. But those are the only four games where where you can actually say – they're not going to be favored to win those games. Um, I got the Bills winning 12 to 13 games this year. Uh, I, I like them that much. I, I don't see any reason to doubt this team, doubt Josh Allen. Uh, this, this could be the Bills' year. Yeah, as long as Josh Allen stays healthy, um, I can't see your pick not coming through. The only thing that bothers me is everybody being on, on the Bills. You know what I mean? I would rather be in a position like they've been – the last few seasons where they uh, where they have not uh, really got the respect that really they uh, deserve. But um, James Cook, you know, uh, this kid has been impressive in training camp. Uh, could be the next Thurman Thomas. I know that's a hefty statement, but he's that type of running back. Um, it, not spectacular on the ground because he didn't give it, get enough opportunities at Georgia when you look at his yards I'm talking about. Uh, but I think given the proper opportunity and the proper uh, offense, he could really flourish. And you can't forget about Devin Singletary. He, he's finished the year strong last year at running back. So, yeah, the Bills got plenty of weapons offensively. Defensively, they revamped that defensive line. My concern is at cornerback. They're scheduled to start a rookie, their number one draft choice, the kid out of Florida, uh, Ilium, and then also – uh, Tredavious White, the all-pro cornerback who went out at the end of last year with an injury, still isn't fully recovered. So that's my only question mark there. And, you know, Jesse, you mentioned 
They give up 17 points a game last year, number one in scoring defense. But, you know, what bothers me is when they played really good offenses, they really didn't slow them down. And, you know, if they played any kind of defense, even close to average against Kansas City, they win that game. You know, there's no two ways about it. No excuses. 13 seconds ago, I don't care if you kick the ball in the end zone. Okay, when the other team takes the ball over on their own 25 with 13 seconds ago, and you're supposed to be that good defensively, you don't allow a team to go 45 yards and get in field goal range in two plays. I'm sorry, timeouts or no timeouts. Anyway, I'm going to take a look. Yeah, I mean, any other thing else you want to add? Any retorts to whatever I said? No, I mean, I I think we're in full agreement, uh, you know, I, I like the bills. I don't like the price. I don't like the fact that anybody, everybody's on them, yeah. but uh, you know, everybody's on them for a reason. That's, yeah. that's my point of view. Yeah. I'm just, you know, I, I won't lie to the viewers. I'm a little biased in this regard. I'm from Western New York. I'm 60 miles away from Buffalo. Uh, they've been my team since I've been a little kid. So I uh, am very torn when it comes to making betting decisions on them. And most times than not, I stay away from their games because of that, because I never want to get my emotions involved. That's why I assigned it to that guy. Because I, I thought it was because I was complaining last week. <laughs> that too. That too. Geez, after three weeks, he's already complaining. I says, I got to give him something. I got to give him a carrot. You know what I mean? Got to dangle it. So uh, he sticks around for a while, and I'm sure he will. Uh, I'm going to take a look at the New England Patriots, Jesse. Ten and six a season ago, a little bit surprising. Uh, they ended up being a playoff team because the expectations weren't that high. Uh, and if you looked at their total last year, it was nine. They surpassed that with 10 wins. But, you know, a, a Bill Belichick team at a 17-game schedule with a total of nine, uh, that opened up a lot of eyes. And guess what? Even after winning 10 games last year and making the playoffs, the odds makers are telling us, you know what? Uh, I think they're going to come down to earth this year because their over is eight and a half at minus 125. Their under is eight and a half at plus 105. And uh, two ways I look at strength of schedule. And uh, w- the first way is to look at New England's upcoming opponents for this season and add up their projected win totals. That comes to 149 and a half and net equates to the eighth toughest schedule in the NFL. Um, Not good news for a Patriots team that's going over a turnover on their offensive coaching staff. I watched in the game last night, and I don't know how long they're going to keep doing this, Jesse, but Matt Patricia and Joe Judge, two uh, coaches that were with New England at one time, uh, Patricia spent many years as a defensive coordinator, Judge, as their special teams coach, both were head coaches and were unsuccessful returned to new England this year. Somebody has to replace Josh McDaniels. Who's now the head coach at uh, Las Vegas. And these two split the duties last night. So I I just don't see how you're going to succeed doing that, but you never know what's on Belichick's mind. He might be testing the waters. I think their defense will be very good. I think they'll be offensively challenged once again, Um, and they're not going to be terrible offensively, but, uh, with this kind of schedule, they have to play, uh, they're, they may be in a situation where they have to play catch up. And I do not, uh, have a lot of confidence in that regard. I'm not a big fan of Mac Jones. I know he had a good, uh, rookie season, but in any event, look, their first four games of the year, Jesse at Miami, at Pittsburgh, home against Baltimore and at green Bay. I mean, they may be looking at own four. Uh, coming right out of the gate, possibly one and three. Uh, I have them going two and seven on the road, five and three at home. I'm predicting a seven and 10 mark for New England this year. And uh, like I said, with the changeover going on on the offensive side of the ball, I don't see that being a smooth transition. They were saying on last night's telecast that Belichick has been more involved in the offense during training camp than he has been at any time in his career, because we both know Belichick's a defensive mastermind. And uh, I just, uh, uh, to me, this is going to be an average team at best, New England. Your thoughts, Jesse? I can't disagree with anything you said. I mean, 
it, it is tough to second guess Bill Belichick and bet yeah. against Bill Belichick. But at the end of the day, the cupboard looks a little bare and, uh, it, it, you know, it might be time to rebuild for, for this team. Okay. So for Jesse Shule, you can find him at jessieshule.com. Also at sportsmemo.com, picksandparleys.net, just to name a few. Like he just alluded to, sportsmemo.com, where we're both handicappers on that site. Uh, far from a minor league organization there. Uh, they are, we are a sister site of Wager Talk. And uh, contrary to popular belief, we're not the minor league ball club. There's a lot of very, very good handicappers on that site. Myself and Jesse, Joey D'Amico, uh, Teddy covers uh, a whole cast of characters there that uh, real recognizable and successful names at that site. You could find me at rbwins.com. That's my personal website, rbwins.com. Folks, anybody who tells you they can't make money on the NFL preseason, they don't know what they're talking about. Uh, I am since last year, 11 and six in the NFL preseason, including nine and two with my last 11 uh, since 2012 63 and 46 as documented by sportscapping.com that's good for 58 percent. and at sportscapping since 2010 i've had five five top 10 finishes that's rbwins.com also could find me at sportscapping.com sportsmemo.com and picksandparleys.net me and jesse uh common thread on those other three sites. So Jesse, always a pleasure, my friend, get some sleep, get some rest, and we'll see you next Friday and have a, uh, a great weekend. Knock them dead with your picks, buddy. You too, my man. Looking forward to it next Friday. Me too. Until the next time for Jesse Shule and Ross Benjamin, we'd like to wish each and every one of you all the very best. Good luck and God bless folks.